Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Polaroid Automatic Land Camera 450. Uh, it was uh, made starting in 1971 and then depending on where you find your information it went to 1974 or 1976. Uh, it was the last series of the traditional uh, pack film cameras with the bellows uh, the 420 and the 430 probably continued after this one. And then after this, they did the reporter series. There were bellows cameras, but they were just viewfinder cameras. So this was the last of the uh, high-end traditional cameras. It has the Zeiss Icon um, combined rangefinder viewfinder. It has a three element, 114 millimeter glass lens. It's f8.8 at widest, has the normal controls, uh, you slide here to focus, and then it has this film speed wheel here on the bottom, these things are always kind of a pain to turn, I think that was by design. And then it has a lighting selector with this yellow marked driver here, and then that tells you whether you're using um, high speed film or or regular film here, whether it's outdoors, indoors, or used in flash. And then it has the normal uh, wheel for light and darken around the lens front here. <clears throat> this one has an electronic timer. That's for timing the development of the prints because the earlier prints uh, weren't quite as stable time and temperature wise as the later Fuji film, pack film. That did cause it to require a second battery. It's got connections for two of those snap-in type batteries. I used a 123A and a piece of cork down at the bottom and some tape just so I didn't have to splurge and buy a snap-on battery for this guy. Anyway, three volts is three volts. Um, like the 50 series, the high-end ones that had the Zeiss rangefinders, the body's metal instead of plastic, so it actually does have a tripod socket. This one did not use the traditional, I can't remember the number, 268, I think, uh, flash bulb adapter. It has, um, and I have it somewhere in a box. I didn't use it for this pack that I ran through this. It's a louvered. Uh, flash cube adapter and you can see there's a little cam here and as you change the focus distance it moves the cam and it would open and close the louvers on the flash adapter and it was made to use the GE uh, high-powered flash cubes they were quite a bit stronger than a regular flash cube like you would see on a, an old 126 film camera Flash range uh, was three and a half feet to about ten feet. So the flash was made for use indoors pretty much. Uh, it's a little over a meter to about three meters. And depending on how you set your film speed adapter and the lighting selection here, um, this could go from F8.8 F12.5, F17.5, F25, F35, and it would stop all the way down to F42 at the smallest aperture. Um, like most of these, the light and darken control is actually moving a graduated filter in front of or out from in front of the light sensor here, um, and that varies the shutter. This model, uh, the shutter would go from 10 seconds to 1 1,200th of a second. Um, that's a respectable range for a camera that was introduced in 1971. It's in line with the speeds that a lot of the SLRs of that time could do. And this is a large format camera. Um, I broke this guy out because I've been hoarding a stash of color and black and white uh, Fuji pack films since they're, they're both discontinued. 
Um, I'm afraid it's getting too old, so I figure, okay, I better shoot with the cameras that require it. So I took this a little, little bit north of here to Hernandez, New Mexico. Uh, one of Ansel Adams' better-known photographs is Moonrise over Hernandez, New Mexico. And it, we're just past the full moon here in May of 2019. So this was last month, which you know how far behind I am on these things. Anyway, I went to the spot where he took the picture. It's right by the side of the road. But the graveyard and the church that are in the foreground of that picture, they're still there, um, but you can't see them. Trees have matured and there are some buildings, so you, you could not recreate that picture. I sort of gave it a whirl anyway. Uh, there's a church across the road from the church he photographed, and the, it sort of slopes up towards the foothills. So I drove up a little ways, set this guy up on a tripod. Amazingly, I have the cable adapter for this guy. And, you know, I took some pictures of Moonrise. Anyway, they're nothing like Ansel Adams' photo. I mean, the guy was a genius in the dark room, and it was a really fortuitous photo. Um, you know, they're okay. Just okay. I think I need to collimate uh, infinity on this guy because they're not quite as sharp as they should be. Um, probably the best photo technically that I got was this one of a tree in our yard. It was just kind of a test photo to make sure the basic functioning of the camera was working. Um, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. You know, a little bit of uh, photographic history, walking in Ansel Adams' footsteps. So before the rest of my film goes bad, I'm going to be kicking around with some pack film cameras, and I will see you then.